This is ABC 15 Mornings. The round the clock search for survivors continues. I have never seen so many ambulances and police in my life all at once. The question remains, why did a building that stood for 40 years crumble to the ground? Facing decades in prison. Why that shouldn't be uh, enough, there should be more. Today, Derek Chauvin receives his sentence. Wildfire season raging across Arizona. This morning, what's open and what's not. Too good to be true. They took the money, um, said she'd get her loan, and she hasn't gotten anything. A warning about online loans. Four to shoot for Paul. Tries a three-pointer. That's good. You can't win them all. On the bright side, the Suns will get another home game. Y'all ever thought about the wild missions we've been on? We've taken out planes, trains, tanks. I'm not going to even think about the submarine. Shifting the box office into a higher gear. Today, a summer blockbuster drives into theaters. Zooms into theaters, right? And into theaters only on this Friday. Revenue up as we move into a weekend. We say thank you for waking up with ABC 15 mornings. Kaylee O'Kelly here in studio alongside my friend Nick Saletti. I think one of my first dates ever was a Fast and Furious movie, like the first one. Really? <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh, I bet that I'm, was a I'm, fun I'm, night. I'm, I'm, I'm dating myself here. <laughs> oh, no please, pun intended, but aging myself. Uh, let's talk about that most accurate forecast this morning. Meteorologist Iris Simracio is joining us. And I said last hour, I think that heat's coming out as Fast and Furious today, Iris. Yeah, seriously, especially considering if we look back just, just a couple days ago when we were talking highs in the 90s, it's definitely going to feel hotter today. We're also feeling drier too. In fact, as you look at Desert Doppler radar, we're quiet pretty much across Arizona this morning as we wake up to mostly clear conditions. That moisture continues to clear out of the valley and today a sunny, dry day, no storm chances for us. Our temperature right now 85 degrees. That dew point just keeps falling every hour and again we're going to see a drier day today overall, but storm chances, they'll be back eventually by next week. In the meantime, we dry out and get hotter through the weekend. So right now we're at 85. Temperatures will be in the 80s through about 8 a.m. 90s for a few hours after that. And then the hundreds set in a little earlier today, likely by around lunchtime. We'll see then a high of 107 this afternoon. I think three to four o'clock our hottest time and then temperatures will start to trend down into the low hundreds even just after sunset through 8 p.m. Clear today, clear through the weekend. But again, those storm chances really going up, bringing more moisture into our state, which we desperately need for the firefights that continue. I'm going to break down that seven day forecast for you in just minutes. OK, Iris, thank you. Uh, by eight o'clock this morning, all but one of the national forests in our state will close. All state trust lands are going to be closing to the public yeah. as well. This is a hugely unprecedented step here. All of this to try and prevent any more human caused wildfires. Much of Arizona still locked in a serious drought situation. Carla Navarrete breaking down all the information we need to know. Carla, you spoke with the forestry department and a wildfire expert. So what kind of insight are they giving you this morning? Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of insight, and I hate to be the bearer of bad news, but the drought situation in our state is dire, right? Where over 50% of our state is in that extreme drought condition right now, which is really bad. One of the experts telling me you can throw a dart into the Arizona state map and pretty much hit a wildfire anywhere throughout our state. Now, here is the list of the national forests that are closing or closed already. Coconino, Kaibab, Apache, Sit Graves, Tonto, the last one to be added to the list this morning, Prescott National Forest. Now, the only one that does remain open, but I will say it has some restrictions, is the Coronado National Forest in Southern Arizona. But take a look at the map of the Tonto National Forest, which is where we're at this morning. Even though the forest is closed, there are some lakes and rivers that do remain open. So if you are trying to get outdoors over the weekend. Roosevelt Canyon, Apache Lake, Saguaro Lake, the Lower Salt River and the Bartlett Lake. Those are open, but I will tell you it is only the lakes that do remain open. Now the spokesperson for the Forestry Department, she gave us some really good advice if you're planning on heading out and what to look out for. Take a listen. State parks are open. So if people want to recreate, they still have a variety of options to do so at our Arizona State Parks. They also have to remember, though, that there are fire restrictions in the state parks. They have different fire restrictions for different areas. So the best piece of advice I could give to you to give to the public is just have them check wildlandfire.az.gov. That's our new fire restrictions website. Um, 
for parks specific, they can go to the state parks website and get that information. Okay, so we have all of those links that Tiffany Davila, the spokesperson, just mentioned on our website. We have a very comprehensive approach for you as you head out there this weekend. Now, coming up at 6.30, I'm going to talk about the drought situation. What led us to the position that we are in right now that led, all of these, led to all of these closures that we're seeing and how we can help keep Mother Nature alive and well here in our state. And of course, we're hoping, hoping, crossing our fingers for that monsoon season to really, really kick it into high gear this year. For now, reporting live at the Tonto National Forest, I'm Carla Navarrete. Back to you guys in the studio. All right, Carla. Yeah, as long as Mother Nature keeps that dry lightning away, we'll take any moisture we can get. 605 Camp Geronimo near Payson. Among the campgrounds pausing operations because of the backbone fire. 500 people were sent home this week. The summer organizers were expecting about 3,000 scouts across, from across the desert southwest. Now a troop leader from Gilbert is telling us the camp always prepares for potential evacuations. As far as our time with scouting, it's something we deal with every summer. We always have to worry about wildfires and how they affect camps. The very first thing we do is we do safety drills. The Backbone Fire has burned more than 40,000 acres and is just 1% contained. State lawmakers will be returning to the Capitol this morning as they work to pass a budget. The $12.8 billion spending plan already approved by the state Senate. The House working late Thursday to pass the nine of 11 bills that make up the budget. They're expected to start working again at nine this morning. Once the budget gets approved, it then heads to Governor Doug Ducey's desk. One of the items that was approved by both the House and the Senate, the nearly $2 billion income tax cut package. It would drop Arizona's tax rate to 2.5% over three years. The current rates are as high as 8%. The tax cuts would shield high-earning taxpayers from the effects of the new tax surcharge approved by voters in November to boost education funding. It could be challenged in court, though, and education groups are talking about putting a veto referendum on the ballot. We have poured our literal blood, sweat, and tears into Invest in Ed twice. Well, if the groups are successful with their push for that veto referendum, voters could have a say on this in 2022. It's something we've not said in weeks. Suns lose. Yeah, it hurts. Next on ABC 15 Mornings, how the team will regroup and get a win tomorrow night. We're going to be confident here. And during the pandemic, restaurants gained a huge amount of online customers ahead. How they plan to keep your business by offering digital deals. Well, good morning, Craig Fui, Colin Harmon, talking about the Suns lost to the Clippers last night in Los Angeles, 106-92, game three. The Suns just came out. I thought kind of flat. I mean, it wasn't an enthusiastic start while the Clippers came out on fire. They had to. Yeah. I mean, you can't get down 0 and 3 in a, in a series. I mean, good point. It's never happened in, <laughs> no. in NBA history, a yeah. team coming back from a 3 0 hole and them going back home uh, in front of their home crowd who decided to show up in the third yeah. quarter. Yeah. Uh, I mean, that was the game that the, the Suns knew that they were going to get the Clippers' best effort. And hey, the sky is, is not falling here. We were all excited about Chris Paul coming yeah. back. And then Chris Paul and Devin Booker, that's our first topic here. They just kind of go out and are flat. 10 of 40 from the field combined. Yeah, I can't have that. That's clear. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and to have zero points in the first quarter in terms of, like, coming out and setting a tone right. in the return, that didn't help matters. Uh, the fact that the Suns were up two at the half despite – the way these guys shot, 4 of 20 in the first half. Shocking. Yeah, I yeah. mean, 16 missed field goals tied for the most for that duo in any half this season. They were 10 of 40 for the game. Yeah, I mean, 30 good. missed shots. Uh, that's tied for the most from that duo all season long, yeah. too. So that's not exactly a, uh, a recipe for success. And when they were on the floor, they, were, they both finished the game minus 15, which is not a good statistic. You want that number. That metric should be in the positive. They were minus 15. DeAndre was minus 25. Uh, Jay Crowder was minus 7. The whole starting group was minus, minus, minus. They just didn't have the energy and effort that the Clippers did. Well, and you look at Chris Paul coming back. Who knows how much... You know, Correct. actual run he has gotten. Yeah, he's probably at a home gym putting up some shots, but that's not NBA playoff run. No. You know, so there's there's bound to be some kind of rust when it comes to returning and Absolutely. getting his legs back under him. He said him. that. He yeah. said that. Yeah. And then with Devin Booker, I mean, you throw a mask on somebody, that's, that's got to be so uncomfortable yeah. with it, your nose broken in three places. And listen, he said, hey, no excuses here. I didn't feel it. Right. Both of them said we got to be better. Yeah. Uh, I just there's no panic in the Suns team. It's just That's it's an off night. It was they had won nine in a row. Yes. In playoff basketball. Yeah. Like 
That's unheard of. You know, yeah. you're bound for a clunker. Yeah. Topic number two, and that's campaign. Campaign has been phenomenal in these playoffs, but he got just four minutes in last night with a left ankle injury, left the game. Monty said afterwards he tried to come back, just couldn't do it. So now the question is, what do you do at point guard when Chris Paul hadn't played in 10 days, right? And then your backup to Chris Paul is out with an ankle injury after playing just four minutes. Well, there were no good answers last night, that's for sure. But none. hopefully campaign, you know, it just looked like a rollover tweak that he's – Hopefully back yeah. Saturday in some form or fashion. But uh, clearly that was a, a massive loss because of the energy and the spark that he brings off the bench. That's it. You know, and he, the, the Clippers have not been able to, to contain him whatsoever. So when you have – you couple Chris Paul – not being Chris Paul coming back yes. and then losing campaign and getting basically no minutes from him. Yeah. You know, there, there's not a whole lot of places to turn here. And campaign strength is his quickness yeah. and his speed, right? He takes it to the rim all the time. Topic number three, and that's just the Clippers just, they outplayed the Suns. Their effort was that much better. And Monty said it over and over again. They played with desperation. We expected it. We just didn't match it long enough. And you go back through the box score, and there wasn't anything that jumps out as, no, oh, the isn't. Suns got absolutely torched in this category. No. No, they didn't shoot the ball well, but really the Clippers didn't either. It was just their effort and energy mm -hmm. and their ability to get to second-chance points and, right. and beat the, the Suns on the boards. That was probably the biggest disparity is the Clippers beat yeah. them 51-43 on the glass. Yeah. You know, uh, Zubac had a, had a much better game than he has, you know, in the first two games of this series. Yeah, he's strong inside. And, and the Suns just – they turned it over, you know. And, they did. And, again, it's not having campaign for, uh, you know, most of that game. Chris Paul having to go out and, yep. you know, having just minutes where he was trying to find himself again. It's just that wasn't the Suns' offense that we have seen with the great ball movement – and Chris passing and guys knocking down open looks. I mean, they missed a lot of open shots. Yeah. And the Clippers, they, they play good defense. They are a, a good defensive team. Pat Beverly is a pest. We have yes, seen that. Is. That is affecting Devin Booker at this time. All right. And, hey, again, the Clippers absolutely had to have that game last night, and they did. And now we got a series. 106-92. Monty Williams summed the game up afterwards last night at the podium. And then Devin and Chris talked about what they're looking forward to in game four. It was a typical uh, playoff desperation by them. Um, we didn't play with the desperation necessary to win a game like that consistently. And um, that's how I would sum it up. Uh, offensively tonight, uh, we weren't sound at all. The ball just, just didn't pop around the gym the way that we're typical or typically pop it around the gym. But for, for Book, like those kinds of shooting nights uh, don't happen often. I mean, he and Chris both uh, – Chris was probably more conditioning and first time getting back out there. And there was a lot of attention on book, a lot of hands on him. So those guys will adjust. They threw a punch and now we got to, you know, counter with another punch and, and make sure we bring the effort and execution in the next game. You now we move on to the next one. You know, that's what type of team we are. Um, we've been that way the whole, whole season. So, you know, we're going to stick with that. Uh, we're going to come in tomorrow, go over film, regroup and get ready for game four. Get your rest, get some water, hydrate, get ready for game four. Uh, that's about it. That's what we said. We'll come in tomorrow, look at it, see what we did well, see what we didn't do well, and, and get ready for uh, uh, the game on, what, Saturday? Yep. So, you know, there's the summary from Monty and then Devin and Chris. I mean, this team has not given up. They've not rolled over and played dead. They had some fight in them, but not enough last night. And obviously the Clippers had anyone. Well, and they talked about the last time they had lost a game was back in L.A. against the Lakers. Mm -hmm. They showed up to the court the next day. Everybody was pretty much joking yeah. in, a, in good spirits. Same thing that they said about this team in the locker room last night. That's why you bring in CP3. That's why you bring in Jay Crowder for these moments to have the leadership to say, hey, everything is fine, guys. And Monty Williams said, we're not, we can't use the young team excuse anymore. We have one playoff series. Right. That's no longer. It's, we got to show up with a, with a better effort. And I got no doubts that they will on Saturday. Game four, Saturday night, back in L.A. And we can't wait. Thank you, guys. Well, last night's loss means another home game on Monday. There's some good news. Tickets for game five go on sale this morning at 10 o'clock. You can also still get tickets to tickets to tomorrow night's game. The road rally that they had there at Phoenix Suns Arena. It's 10 bucks to get in to watch the game. Game four on the big screen there again at Phoenix Suns Arena downtown. You know, it's so much fun. 
Well, we want to bring in our meteorologist, Iris Ermacio, for a look at the forecast as we get you into the weekend. Certainly a, a soggy day here in the valley that is leading us into what feels like a thick day here this morning. A, a, a sticky day, I think, is what you said. Sorry, you cut off there at the end. You know, yeah, a couple days ago had all of that rain. Today, that humidity is dropping. So you're going to notice it's actually feeling drier this morning than it was even yesterday morning. Now, in northern Arizona, we had some beneficial rainfall yesterday. The valley, not so much. Yesterday, we ended up dry. Didn't see much here popping up in the Phoenix area. But again, beneficial rainfall in other parts of northern Arizona, and we can certainly use more. And there's a chance we're going to get more too, especially as we go into next week and that monsoon weather pattern starts to pick up. But right now, again, losing that moisture and that means we are off to a dry start as we look at desert Doppler radar with clear conditions across the valley and we're waking up to mostly clear conditions across the state of Arizona too. So not a bad start, although again, it would be nice if the temperatures were a little bit lower. They're a little warm right now. We're waking up to temperatures in the low 80s this morning. Now let's talk storm changes because again, as we lose that moisture here in the valley, you're going to notice on Futurecast that we stay sunny and dry through the day today. But this afternoon, I do think we're going to see a few more pop up showers and thunderstorms in northern Arizona, primarily north of the I-40. And then going through the weekend, we've got a chance for more showers and thunderstorms, mainly along the rim and in northeast Arizona, too. For the valley, still looking dry through the weekend before that monsoon weather pattern starts to kick in as we go into next week. And that's when our storm chances start to go up. In fact, as you look at this, by Monday, we're starting to see those first signs of those better storm chances and then they get even better on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday and essentially every day next week is going to be fair game for showers and thunderstorms, the potential too for strong winds and blowing dust. So we're going to have to be on storm watch pretty much every day next week here in the valley and in northern Arizona too. Look at how those storm chances really trend up, especially by the middle of next week. We're talking a 70% chance for showers and thunderstorms in Flagstaff on Wednesday and we could use that rain. That's for sure. Again, as long as we don't get any of that flooding or too much damage from those winds either. So here's what's happening as far as the big picture goes. We've got a disturbance, the one that brought the rain on Wednesday. It's passing by to our east. As it moves to the east, we'll see that increase in rain chances in the high country this weekend, especially on Saturday and along the Magian Rim. And by increase, I mean about a 20 to 30 percent chance for scattered storms. But then once that clears out, we've got this big ridge of high pressure that's essentially setting up to our west. It's the same ridge of high pressure that's going to bring record heat to the Pacific Northwest, but that will also influence the moisture that flows into our state. And you can see on Futurecast by Tuesday, Wednesday, even Thursday of next week, it's getting more active on the map across Arizona and more active here in the valley too as a result. So those rain chances, they're going to be going up. But first, we got to get through a hot weekend. Today, a high of 107, 108 tomorrow. Then Sunday, we're back up above 110. Next week, things start to drop again, at least temperature wise, because those rain chances will go up and more moisture means lower temperature temperatures too. ABC 15 Desert Drive Time, sponsored by Accident Law Group. All right, time for your Desert Drive Time traffic, sponsored by Accident Law Group. This is a live look at the I-17 at 7th Street. Cars getting by a little better this morning after yesterday's crashes, so that's good to hear. Friday light, so far so good. We'll keep you posted if we see any crashes or delays out there and help you get around them, of course. Sure looks pretty on this Friday, 621. More restaurant chains are rolling out rewards programs to try to keep the customers who were ordering online during the pandemic. Online orders at restaurants grew 124% from March 2020 to March of this year. McDonald's recently announcing it's launching its first loyalty program July 8th. Chipotle expanding its rewards program. And these offer special discounts and freebies for returning customers. I think you are going to see a lot of perk matching or uh, status matching. Uh, that, that could be a trend that we see over the next couple of years from the restaurant industry. Most of these programs are completely digital. Well, it's never too late to drop a few pounds for summer. Ahead on your bulletin board, three simple tips that you can start doing this weekend. Plus, what exactly is out there? Today, the Pentagon could release its report on UFOs. Welcome back. Helping to slim down this summer. It's not too late to shed some pounds and get healthy in the process. That's what's on your bulletin board this morning. First, stay hydrated. It helps keep you fuller longer. It also is it's essential, especially if you're exercising or spending long periods of time outside. Next up, don't forget about that diet. Typically, the cleaner you eat, 
the better, but make sure your meals are balanced. Falling victim to fad diets will only derail your success. And don't forget your workout. You don't uh, even have to leave your home for this, okay? You can do things like burpees, crunches, flutter kicks while you're watching TV in your living room. That's the good news. There's also plenty of workout videos on YouTube for free. Even if you don't quite exactly meet that weight loss goal, you're going to get healthier in the process. So all is not lost. It's still good for your body. So taking you one step towards living a healthier life, that is what is making our bulletin board on a Friday. Yeah, it'll make you feel good for sure. Apple wants to help you get moving as well with new celebrity themed workouts. Starting Monday, its Fitness Plus service will have different workouts featuring artists like Lady Gaga, Alicia Keys, JLo, and users will be able to choose slow or fast and high or low impact moves all set to their songs. It could be the biggest opening weekend at the box office since the beginning of the pandemic. F9, it's the newest addition to the Fast and Furious franchise. Hits theaters today, and people will only be able to see this one in person at the theater. No streaming options. The original Fast and Furious movie debuted 20 years ago this week. Wow. With all the NOS and all. 20 years. Where's the time going? <laughs> <laughs> it's been a good 20. All right, up next at 6.30. An ABC 15 viewer takes action, helping kids right here at home with a huge donation. Dozens of students now are going to be able to learn how to ride a bike. And the world will be watching as the man convicted of killing George Floyd learns his fate. I'll break down how many years the judge could hand down to Derek Chauvin. That's coming up.